In the shadowed heart of Leinster, a kingdom steeped in ancient lore, resided a king whose hunger for tales was as insatiable as the sea. His court was a sanctuary for wordsmiths, but none held sway as profound as the enigmatic storyteller. A man of ethereal countenance and haunting eyes, he commanded an estate as vast as his repertoire of stories. A pact bound him to the king a new tale every night, a ransom paid in lands and gold. Years had passed, and still the storyteller's wellspring of imagination seemed endless. Yet, on a dawn shrouded in an unnatural stillness, dread crept into the storyteller's heart. The fertile fields of his mind lay barren, a desolate expanse devoid of a single seedling of a single seedling of inspiration. Panic, a venomous serpent, coiled within him as the sun ascended, each passing hour a noose tightening around his neck. The king's expectant gaze, a chasm of anticipation, loomed over him. Desperation, a cruel mistress, drove him to the edge of his estate. There, sprawled in the dew-kissed grass, was a creature of desolation an old man, his body a withered husk, a wooden leg propped beside him. The man's eyes held a strange allure, a depth that seemed to pierce the storyteller's soul. With a gamble born of desperation, the storyteller engaged the stranger in a game of chance. The stakes escalated with terrifying rapidity. Gold, land, possessions and even his beloved wife vanished into the old man's insatiable hunger for victory. In a final, heart-wrenching gamble, the storyteller lost himself, transformed into a hare, hunted by his own hounds. The terror of the chase was a macabre ballet of fear and flight, a torment that etched itself into his soul. Dored to human form, he confronted the old man, a demand for answers burning on his lips. The stranger revealed himself as Angus of the Bruff, a name that carried the weight of ancient power. With a chilling smile, Angus explained that this ordeal was a crucible, a test of spirit from which a tale of unparalleled depth would emerge. The storyteller, a vessel emptied and refilled with the raw essence of fear and desperation, returned to the king's court. The tale he spun was a dark tapestry woven from threads of terror, loss, and the haunting spectre of the old man. The king, a captive of the storyteller's haunting narrative, was consumed by a darkness that mirrored the storyteller's own. As the final words echoed through the chamber, a silence descended, thick and oppressive. The king's face, a mask of shadows, revealed nothing. The storyteller, heart pounding, awaited the king's judgment. A flicker of light danced in the king's eyes, a cold fire ignited by the tale's potency. With a chilling smile, the king declared the storyteller's triumph, but in that smile, a darkness lurked, a promise of a new terror, a tale yet to be told. The storyteller, victorious yet consumed by dread, retreated into the night, the spectre of the old man's enigmatic smile his constant companion. The tale had ended, but the story was far from over. The storyteller emerged from the king's chamber, a man transformed. The tale he had spun had been a living nightmare, a descent into the abyss of his own soul. The king, a sphinx-like figure, had been the catalyst, drawing forth a darkness he had never known existed. Nights turned into days as the storyteller wrestled with the echoes of his creation. The old man, Angus of the Bruff, became a spectre haunting his dreams, a malevolent force that whispered promises of power and dominion. The storyteller found himself drawn to the edge of sanity, the line between creator and creation blurring. His once idyllic estate transformed into a labyrinth of shadows, the trees whispered secrets, the wind carried mournful dirges, and the earth seemed to pulse with an unseen malevolence. In the dead of night, he would hear the faintest whisper, a name carried on the wind the Shadow King. A madness began to creep into his heart, a desire to delve deeper into the darkness he had conjured. The storyteller, once a weaver of dreams, was becoming the architect of nightmares. He started to see the world through a distorted lens, every shadow a threat, every whisper a command. His wife, once a beacon of light, became a stranger, her eyes filled with a fear that mirrored his own. The once vibrant estate was now a desolate wasteland, a reflection of the chaos within him. One night, as a storm raged outside, the storyteller found himself drawn to the old oak at the heart of the estate. The wind howled like a wounded beast, and lightning painted the sky in hues of terror. 
as a particularly violent bolt struck the earth, a figure emerged from the shadows, a cloaked figure with eyes that burned like embers. It was Angus of the Bruff, his form more imposing than ever before. A chilling smile curved his lips as he extended a hand. Welcome, Shadow King, he whispered, his voice carrying the weight of centuries. The storyteller, heart pounding, reached out to grasp the outstretched hand. As their fingers intertwined, a darkness consumed him, a void that promised both oblivion and power beyond comprehension. As their hands met, a vortex of darkness consumed them. The world dissolved into a swirling maelstrom of shadows and echoes. The storyteller felt himself being pulled into an abyss, a realm beyond comprehension. Time ceased to exist as he was plunged into an eternity of nothingness. Then, a flicker of light pierced the darkness. He opened his eyes to find himself in a desolate, barren landscape. The sky was a perpetual twilight, and the ground was cracked and lifeless. Before him stood Angus of the Bruff, his form now shrouded in an aura of otherworldly power. Welcome, Shadow King Angus intoned, his voice echoing in the emptiness. You have crossed the threshold, and now you hold the power to shape reality. The storyteller felt a surge of power coursing through him, a sensation both exhilarating and terrifying. He looked around, his mind racing. Could he create a world of eternal bliss, or would he succumb to the temptation of absolute dominion? Angus's voice broke through his reverie. Beware the allure of power, young king. It is a seductive mistress who will consume you if you let her. The storyteller's heart pounded. He knew Angus spoke the truth. The path ahead was fraught with peril, and the choices he made would echo through eternity. The storyteller stood at the precipice of creation, a god in a nascent universe. The weight of his decision was a crushing burden. To create a utopia, a realm of eternal harmony and abundance, would be a noble pursuit. Yet, the allure of power, of bending reality to his will, was a siren song that whispered promises of godhood. A vision of a world without pain, sorrow or want flashed before his eyes, a realm where knowledge was infinite and creativity boundless. But then, another vision emerged, a world under his iron fist, where he was the sole arbiter of fate. A world where he was worshipped as a deity, feared and obeyed. The choice was agonizing. On one hand, a benevolent ruler, a savior of humanity, on the other, a despotic overlord, a conqueror of souls. The storyteller was trapped in a moral labyrinth, his mind a battleground of conflicting desires. As he stood there, wrestling with his conscience, a voice echoed in the void. It was Angus, his spectral mentor. Remember, young king, the voice said, with great power comes great responsibility. Your choice will shape not just this world, but countless others. The storyteller closed his eyes, his mind a maelstrom of conflicting emotions. When he opened them again, his expression was resolute. He would not succumb to the temptation of absolute power. He would create a world based on balance, a world where freedom and order coexisted. With a surge of will, he began to shape the nascent world. He created land and sea, sky and earth. He seeded life, from the smallest microbe to the tallest tree. He instilled in his creations the spark of consciousness, the capacity for love, joy, and sorrow. But he also created laws, a framework to ensure balance and harmony. He established a system of checks and balances, preventing any single entity from gaining too much power. He created beings who would challenge and question, who would strive for knowledge and truth. And so, the storyteller became the architect of a universe, a cosmos born from both light and shadow. He was not a god, but a creator, a steward of life. And as he looked upon his creation, he felt a sense of peace, a fulfillment he had never known before. 